Winters in northern Indiana are long and tough on GA pilots. Freezing rain, sub-freezing operating conditions, winter storms, high winds, lake effect snow, and the permacloud that seems to set in after Christmas and hang around until April. Tempting pilots to climb through her icy layers for the promise of sunny blue skies on top. For these reasons, many GA pilots schedule our annual inspection and major work for this time of year. This can also be long and tough with its own set of challenges. Most of the time you win the annual inspection lottery. It's quick and no major issues found and you're back to airworthy with minimal cost. But sometimes you lose and this is one of those days. through this cylinder base stud hole and then into the, inside the crankcase okay. as well. Okay. And it's coming out here, makes about a 90 degree turn and then runs this way here. Mm -hmm. Yep, correct. And uh, and so you found oil, what, here on the bottom of the engine? The whole, I mean, the engine cowling was full of oil. This whole side of the engine was completely coated. Wow. Here so it's, it's that, that crack is through the case, right? That's correct. And so there's no signing off that annual with that, right? Yeah. No. I'm sitting here with Brady Kensol, our A&P. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your background and how you ended up here. <laughs> yep, I'm Brady, uh, A&PIA. Uh, started in aviation in 2010 uh, in the Marine Corps. Working on helicopters there. That's where I got my start. Um, got out, ended up going to Florida, working in a general aviation shop. Um, got my MP in Florida, moved back here. This is my home, um, and started working here. Been here since uh, September. Well, I started at King Era in uh, July of 2019, and this shop actually opened in September of 2019. Okay. We have yeah. two locations. Yeah, so this is your second location. The yeah. original shop's up in Elkhart, Elkhart yeah. and Marty King's the, the head guy there. Yeah. He's been yeah. doing this forever. Long, long time. Long, long time. Yeah, so he's my son, my mentor. Yeah, um, absolutely. And my boss, obviously. Yeah. So. so we ended up here, uh, our old A&P at Warsaw, uh, and decided it was time to retire after many, 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 many years, um, and which was sad because we lost our A&P on the field. Um, but through conversations and recommendations, King Arrow kept coming up, and we've been down here ever since, and uh, you've taken really good care of us. We appreciate it. So, unfortunately, sometimes your job is uh, to deliver some bad, bad news, bad right? News. Yeah, so, um, we brought the plane down for our, our annual in February. We like to do that. Uh, we have been watching a crack on the right wing, on the innermost rib and the wing walk area. And uh, so the first bad news call was uh, about two weeks after we dropped it off. Yeah, it's spreading in the crack in the second grade. Yeah, it's, uh, it's time. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's that gonna cost? How long? No problem. Uh, so the wing had to come off the plane. We shipped it to Aerospace Components in Kendallville. They specialize in this kind of thing. Uh, and they set us up real well. Quick turnaround, about two and a half, three weeks there. Um, took care of the problem. And you got the wing back on the plane, and hey, yeah. we're ready to go, all right? <laughs> Not so fast, right? So uh, the second phone call you had to make was uh, not a pleasant one, I'm sure, either, right? 4.30 on a Friday afternoon. I remember it because I looked at my phone, and I saw your name. And immediately, my heart started pounding, and I thought, Brady wouldn't be calling me on a Friday afternoon at 4.30 uh, with good news, right? <laughs> not our <normally. laughs> First, you started with a couple questions. I remember you said, hey, have you noticed any abnormal oil consumption, fluctuating oil pressure when you're flying? No, 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 no. You said, you got a crack in your crankcase. And I'm like, okay, what's that mean? And you said, well, that means a lot of things. So we, we can talk about that, right? So um, we actually went through several conversations, right? Um, um, the long and short of it is the engine's got to come off the plane. 
we have to address the crack, right? right. You can't sign off the annual. Obviously, as a pilot, I'm not going to fly a plane yeah. that's got a crack in the crankcase, right? So option number one, if I remember, was um, we find a new, a, cr a new or a serviceable crankcase. Right. Uh, we send the, out, the engine out for a teardown, inspect, and rebuild in the new crankcase. Yeah. Um, that's the cheapest and potentially the quickest option, but not necessarily the best option. And, and why is that? Well, the engine already has uh, 1,600 hours, a little over 1,600 since TBO. Yep. Um, and the engine has been torn down already once in between overhauls. Yeah. Uh, you kept digging in the locks for us and you said, oh, and by the way, this engine's been overhauled in the past. This engine has almost 6,000 hours on it since new. Yep. And that's a lot of hours. I, I'm not sure if you want to mess with another overhaul on this engine. Um, you know, maybe we, we do, maybe we go with a new engine, maybe we go with a reman. We, we've got options here, so let's talk about that. So we immediately, I think, ruled out buying a new crankcase and just trying to service the engine as it is. We're so close to TBO, let's not nickel and dime ourselves. It doesn't ourselves. make a lot of sense. To you. It doesn't make a lot of sense. That's exactly what you said. Um, and so really then the conversation came down, I think, to really, do we just go for a major overhaul? Obviously we're replacing the crankcase, right? So crankcase and then an overhaul, major overhaul, uh, zero out the engine, but that engine again, still since new some of these components may have seen upwards of six thousand hours right because by uh, legally they can be put back on the plane during an overhaul if they're within spec correct correct yeah, yeah. so the one of the misconceptions i think people have with an overhaul is you're getting all brand new stuff inside yeah, right yeah, that's no that's not the case why don't you tell us a little bit about that so an overhaul is either there's there's different tolerances for everything. There's overhaul tolerance and there's factory new. Okay. Um, most engine shops will overhaul to factory new spec. But it's uh, important to ask, right? Correct. Because yeah. uh, when they give you a quote, and if you, you do this yourself or you have experience, you can get two or three quotes from two or three reputable shops and they'll be all over the place. You know, maybe 45,000, maybe 65, maybe 80,000. And they're all doing an overhaul, so what gives, yeah, right? I mean, that's the difference between either overhauling your existing cylinders, if they can be, or putting new cylinders on yep. uh, ignition system, whether it's new or overhauled. Um, that's, that's where those price differences are. Okay. And the other thing we're dealing with right now as we sit here in early March of 2023 is supply chain issues, right? right? So um, you cautioned right away that like homing cylinders right now are about a 12 month back order from what I understand. Correct. Yeah. Um, and, and so you cautioned us if we get into an overhaul situation, that overhaul time goes from six months to nine months to potentially a year or more. Or more. Could be. Right? Yeah. So, last option we talked about was a, uh, a factory remand, yeah, rebuilt. rebuilt from like homing, or a brand new IO540 off the shelf from like homing, right? We priced both those options. Yeah. And if you remember, why don't you tell us what we found out about both of those? Yeah, rebuild roughly 68,000. Um, and then factory new, I want to say it was, it was over 100. 120, yeah, I think, is what you quoted something, me. Something like that. Yeah. And lead times on both of those? 12 to 13 months. 12 to 13 months. Yeah. So there's that number yeah, again, right? A year. <laughs> yeah, a year, yeah. right? We finally landed on on uh, doing the, um, the factory remand from Lycoming. Uh, we were accepting the fact that we were 12 to 14 months, but we knew we were going to get an engine that was going to be shipped to us whole yeah. with Lycoming cylinders to Lycoming factory specs and Lycoming's warranty and a, and a Lycoming warranty. Yeah. So we weren't going to be nickeled and dimed to death on this thing. It's kind of a plug and play, if you will, option, right? Right. And, uh, and so that's what we landed on. We accepted the fact that we weren't going to be flying this airplane at least for a year or more, yeah. right? Um, we even joked about you might charge us rent, <laughs> you know, sitting here in the yeah. corner, right? Um, and then about three days later, um, I guess fate or luck or Something. the aviation gods, whatever, um, through some contacts we had at a, a fairly reputable shop, we had actually been talking to them. We had a quote for uh, a reman. We had a quote for an overhaul from them. Uh, they called and said, we just had a customer cancel a factory reman from Lycoming that is due here in June. He ordered it last year, yeah. due in June. He's canceled his order. If you want this engine, you've got to tell me today, and it's yours, right? 
and uh, it took us all about 30 seconds to make that decision. Not a hard decision. Not a hard decision to make. So um, we bit the bullet. The engine's on order, um, and it should be here in June. You're going to need about a month to get it installed, do some ground runs, yeah. and then some test flights in the pattern here before we're comfortable. Um, and then we've got the whole in engine break-in process, which is a whole separate issue. We'll make another video on yeah. that later. Um, the other really big decision we had to make, and we talked you about this and uh, was what do we do from the firewall forward right we're getting a brand new engine well reman engine from Lycoming but the point is it's a zero time engine right um, but what do we do about the exhaust the starter the alternator the vacuum pump the prop all these other items that, that attach to the engine they're all various ages from your digging in the log book the prop is new, uh, got about 400 hours on it since new in 2015 after the prop strike. Prop governor was overhauled at that time. So uh, new prop governor. Uh, new prop governor at that time. Vacuum pump had about 500 hours on it. For, um, for those of you that don't know, on the PA32, uh, this particular model of vacuum pump, uh, they do recommend overhaul or replace at about 500 hours. You said the exhaust is what? It's, it's it was over eight. It was not about 900 since I ran. Yeah, uh, expected repairs necessary. And you observed some some minor cracking, some uh, not cracking, not cracking, just age, age. Okay, it's showing its age. Yeah. Um, so let's take care of the exhaust system. Um, the prop is is uh, is a 2,000 hour TBO on the prop. Correct. 24. 2,400 hours on the prop. We're only at 400 hours, but we're at eight years. Right. And there's another caveat to that overhaul on the, the TBO on the prop, right? It's it's engine time, or you said seven years. Seven years, yeah. right? And so we're at eight years. I'm sorry, it's seventy-two months. Seventy-two months. Okay. Wow. So even shorter. Okay. The prop's in decent shape, right? It's got a few nicks that we've had to blend out right. over the years, yeah. but overall, it's in good shape. So questionable there what we wanted to do uh, with the prop and the prop governor. So we're already in it for an engine, we're already in it for the exhaust, we're already in it for a vacuum pump. What are the other two components we, we needed to look at? Starter and alternator. Starter and alternator. Um, and both of those had 1,600 hours on them roughly since overhaul. And so we decided to just overhaul those at the same time. Um, and that really leaves what? Um, some of the other components in the engine frame itself, right? right. So engine frame and uh, control cables, hoses. And so your recommendation as an AP, you said to us, hey, you're already into this X amount, yeah, right? Whatever, dollar amount. Right. Dollar. He said, uh, if you don't want to be nickel and dime to death over the next 24 months, let's just take the firewall forward. Address everything. Address forward. everything now. Yep. Replace it as necessary. And yeah. And go from there. Yeah. And uh, anything else? What do we miss? Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, all, obviously, all scat ducting yep. uh, will be replaced. All in, um, we're almost at a cost of a new engine, right? We're slightly less, I shouldn't say, we're about 25% uh, less. So again, we're kind of right in the middle, that sweet spot, if you will, right? Um, so essentially, from the firewall forward, we're going to have a new engine. Um, or a zero time component type yeah, engine. Everything will be recertified as needed. Yep. Uh, or new. And that should give us carefree flying for at least, you know, several years and probably the first 500 hours or so. Yep, that's the goal. Yeah. So there you have it. So that's been our month. Um, we're going to follow the progress with Brady over the next couple months as we swap out the engine, uh, doing the ground runs and then those first crucial test flights around the pattern here. Hey, we appreciate all your time and your effort keeping us safe and taking the time to explain to everybody what's going on here. No problem. All right. Appreciate it, Brady. Thanks a lot, yeah. man. All right. That was a piece of cake, right? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. me a favor hit that like button leave a comment tell me what you like tell me what you don't like click that subscribe button tell all your friends thanks for riding along we'll see you next time